Hey guys, welcome to Windshine Audio. We rolled out the Dynaprips 12th anniversary firmware update a couple of weeks ago, and that got us really busy. We've been working round the clock to support and assist the customer for this very project. The purpose of this video today is to clarify and address some of the concern you may have. I hope this video helps you one way or another, but if you do still have more questions in your mind that you need to seek clarification, please leave your comment down below this video or drop us an email and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Let's start with the administrative part of this firmware update project. On our website, there's a web form for you to fill up the firmware update request. There's this order number field that you need to fill in and we get asked quite often, what is this order number all about? Is it you require to place an order with us in order to get the firmware update? No, the firmware update is free of cost to you. It is an initiative of, Aris, uh, of <laughs> Windshine Audio or Dina Frips to provide this firmware update to you at free of cost. This order number on our web form is that if you order the product from Windshine Audio or our authorized partner, you should have received this order number upon placing the order with us. If you misplace this order number for any reason, you just have to fill in Windshine Audio in this field and we'll provide the firmware update tool to you, or we call it FUT. We do understand some of the customer may have purchased the product in the used market or from the grace market seller, sadly, but please do not be worried. Windshine Audio is willing to extend our support to you and please send in your request to us and we'll provide the FUT to you as well. So that clear the firmware update request part. There's another request or question that we ask quite often is that why is it there is a need to open the deck and share with us the high res photo of the FPGA chip? It is the first and more, most crucial part of this firmware update project to make it a very successful one. I know it's a bit of hassle to remove the bulky deck from your hi-fi rack having to remove the top cover or to remove the chassis and having the hassle to take a high resolution photo of the FPGA chips and send it to us. But please understand this, the FPGA firmware update apply to different Dynafrips DAC. For now, we roll out the Aries 2 and Enyo DAC. But in the future, in the near future, we'll be rolling out the firmware update for the Pontus 2, Venus 2, Terminator and the Terminator 2 and Terminator Plus. All this will create quite a few work, much more than what we are handling right now. And we thought having you to have this little bit of hassle and send us the FPGF chips model as well as the model that you are having is important because we want to supply the correct firmware update tool to you. The correct firmware update tool is important why this particular deck that you are having must be installed with the correct firmware. If you install with the wrong firmware for the wrong FPGA chips, this will render the DAC brick. Brick also means the deck will no longer function, it cannot be powered up, it cannot be used anymore, and all you need to do is to send it back to us, we'll fix it in our facility here in Singapore or in the US or in Europe, and we will send it back to you you need to cover the back and forth shipping fee. To minimize the risk of breaking the deck, we need you to send us the FPGF chips model, as well as the model that you are using right now. That will minimize the risk of breaking the deck and minimize the disruption. I hope you understand this and we'll now proceed to the technical part of it. Oh yes, before I forget, since we talk about breaking the deck, how risky is it to update the firmware and the update of the firmware may fail and leading the deck to break or not functioning anymore. We received about 650 requests so far and we have sent the firmware update to the customer and thankfully, touch wood, uh, this is a word so I can touch, only about five to six customer having issue after updating the firmware or the firmware update failed. The deck no longer working, they are sending it back to us at their cost and we'll fix it and send it back to them. 
the back and forth shipping fee is covered by you. Five to six person out of 650 requests is less than 0.1%. It's, it's very little. Is it high risk? I wouldn't say it's high risk. But there's, there's this small 0.5% risk involved that you may break the deck. But in my opinion, the improvement of this firmware update outrun the risks involved. So if the firmware update is manageable, if you are willing to take the risk, I would say go for it. You may have read some of the comment online that says the customer says that after the firmware update, it elevates the sound quality of the deck. I wouldn't go so far to say that all the customers are happy, but I think 99% of the customers are very happy with this firmware update. Right, so come back to this technical part of the second part of this video. If you're very happy with the sound quality of the deck, there's no issue so far, you do not experience any issue, do you need to update the firmware? So it's, it's kind of interrelated. If you're happy with the sound quality of the deck, you do not have any issue, you do not need to update the firmware. But updating the firmware may potentially elevate the sound quality of the deck or the system. If, again, if the firmware update is manageable, I highly encourage you to consider updating the firmware of the deck. What are the aspects of improvement that you would expect after the firmware update? Let's talk about the technical part. So Dynafrips has been working to improve the DSP processing of the deck. The first thing and the most important one is to optimize the FIFO buffer and reclocking scheme. This improve or somehow reduces the clock differences between the source and the deck to minimal so you do not experience compatibility issue with the source. But of course, you may argue that you do not have any issue right now. Why is it there's a need to update this? <laughs> no, you do not need to update. But updating the firmware of the deck may potentially improve the sound quality. So you should consider. The second one is to reduce the audio latency between uh, for more for people who use the deck for video streaming or gaming. So it reduces the audio latency or what we call lip sync. So if it is important to you, this firmware may be useful for you. The third one, the NOS and OS. In my opinion, the NOS, I wouldn't argue to say that it is the true NOS, but in my opinion, it is very close to the NOS that I know of. But if some of the reviewers on the market still think that it is not the NOS, I cannot or I do not have the ability to measure the text or to measure the response of the text to say that it is NOS. But in my opinion, it is very close to the NOS. Or what I have been told by Tina Fripp's firmware engineer is it is really an NOS, a NOS deck that do not do any oversampling for NOS mode. So some of you may have updated the firmware and felt that the NOS sounds even better compared to the previous NOS mode, so to speak. These are the improvements that we made to the firmware that may potentially improve the sound quality of your existing deck. And we are rolling out this for the existing customer as a goodwill or as a loyalty to our customer to further elevate the sound quality of the deck. So do consider updating if the firmware update is manageable. Okay, the next million dollar question we, will, we get asked very frequent is, I have the Pontus deck, I have the Venus deck, I have the Terminator, Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus deck. When will the firmware be released? We are releasing the firmware update in stages. The next one will be the Pontus 2 in about two weeks time. We plan to release the firmware update for Pontus 2 in 1st of April, it's not a joke. For the Venus, it will be middle of April. For the original Terminator with the updated DSP module, this one, this particular one, right here, in some time, 1st of May. And the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus will be middle of May. We release this in stages, it's really not to crunch our resources, <laughs> although we are already crunching our resources to support thousands of our Ares 2 customer on the market right now. But the firmware update is coming for your deck if you are using Pontus, Venus, Terminator, and Terminator Pass deck. Okay, so come back to this since I'm holding this DSP module. There's another confusion that we receive um, quite often, or we get asked quite often, is that I already updated the USB MCU firmware. Do I still need to update the FPGA firmware? 
Right, it's a very good question. There are two firmware running in this DSP module. The first one is the USB MCU, and the second one is the FPGA. There are two different firmware running in this small particular DSP module. In the past, we rolled out USB MCU firmware for the customer to update to address some of the bugs and improve the sound quality. That is for the USB portion. The FPGA firmware update we rolled out recently is to address or is to update the firmware of this FPGA chip. The FPGA chip firmware update applies to all inputs, regardless whether you are using USB input, coaxial input, optical input, or for the higher end that you have I2S input, AES EBU input. The FPGA firmware update improves the sound quality of all inputs. So if you updated the USB MCU firmware in the past, you should or you may consider the FPGA firmware update at this point in time. Since the update is more or less the same, or the procedure of the update is more or less the same as the USB MCU. The next question we get asked very often is, I do not have the ability to update the firmware for the DAC. Would you be able to offer or extend your assistant to us where we may ship the customer may ship the deck back to us or back to our service center to have the deck updated and send it back to the customer. We are considering this, but um, there's no uh, concrete or promise at this point in time. We are talking to our service center to potentially charge a very small fee to update the firmware on behalf of you. So you will need to bear the both way shipping costs and send it back to us, to our service center in the US, Euro or Singapore and the service engineer will update the firmware on behalf of you at a very small fee. We are still in discussion with the service engineer and that will be back to you. So all you need to do is to cover the small fee as well as the back and forth shipping fee. Once this is firmed out, we'll make an announcement for this. But for the customer that who owns Pontus Venus Terminator DAC, the good news is we may be rolling out this DSP module with the latest firmware installed and this particular module here is user replaceable. All you need to do is to pop the top cover open, remove the existing DSP module, install this new DSP module with the latest firmware, and you are all set to go running your deck with the latest 12th anniversary firmware. Okay, I think I've covered most of the stuff that I get asked very often. I need to go back to work and quickly uh, finish off my, all my emails that I receive daily. We are handling about 200 emails a day. It's pretty amazing. And we managed to reply most of the email within 24 hours. So my team has been working very hard along with me to do this. Uh, resources is a bit uh, tight now. If you do get a little bit of delay in our, from our response, please bear with us. I hope this video helps you one way or another. If you still have questions, please leave your question down below in this video or drop us an email using the email link in this video description as well. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you find my video interesting or my channel interesting, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.